Today, I want to talk about how to measure your portfolio returns. I know I was confused when I first looked at metrics and the idea behind this video is to give you tools on how to evaluate and make sure that the money you invested with the level of risk that you're willing to take is working as hard as possible uh, for you and how to compare uh, different investment accounts and actually your own performance as well. So a few years ago, my friend started working for Wealthsimple, which is robo-advisor, and I had a bit of cap space uh, from back in the day in my IRSP, even though I don't use that as an, uh, or a retirement sort of vehicle. Uh, but I decided to try the interface and how it all works with robo-advisor, so I dumped uh, the cap I had around 19,000 into that account. So today, let's look at it and see how it performed uh, during this two and a half year time. Okay, so when you log in, you'll see the account value, the monetary return, and 6.1%. But when I click returns, there is different ways how that can be calculated. So if it's money weighted, it's way higher, time weighted is lower. And I also wanted to emphasize that this is a matter of perspective because the monetary value doesn't change. But the way you calculate it and what those numbers mean can allow you to compare this portfolio, say with like Quest Wealth, if you wanted to invest with uh, Quest Trade uh, instead. So I want to start with simple return because it's easiest to understand and probably the least accurate as well. So I started plotting the numbers, you know, I invested in June 28th. Uh, this is the account value right now, 22,000. I earned around 2,900 and total of money out of pocket was like 19,000 and something. And I would emphasize why it's out of pocket. It's because except putting my own money from what I had in a checking account into this, uh, this account, if I look at the history, it also earned dividends. So like there's $35 here, uh, $20 here. And of course I did not take them out. Uh, I kept them into account and they got reinvested. So when I calculate the return, I want to make sure that I only calculate return on the cash that I physically put in into the account. And once you have those numbers that is fairly easy to calculate, all you do is take how much you earned, uh, divided by how much you invested, and you put percentage. So in total, if simple return, uh, this is how much I earned. And if you want to get the analyzed return, uh, because June 28th is sort of middle of the year, I'm just gonna divide it uh, by two and a half years. So my analyzed return is like 6.09. Uh, so, you know, it's 6.1%. Uh, it's just because I divided by 2.5%. So now what does it mean? Like, is it good? Is it bad? Like you gotta, you gotta compare uh, this uh, to something. So, you know, I, I wanted to compare it to S&P 500. And uh, the problem I ran right away with comparing with the S&P 500 is I actually uh, could not get an accurate estimate just by going to the website of how much S&P 500 grew at the same period of time. So for example, I went to this macro trends website and you know, they have the 2008 minus 6.24%, here is plus 28 and you know, right now it's 8.66%. But I started investing sort of mid of 2018. I'm not sure till what time uh, those numbers work. And then I went to our calculator and I tried to put July and September, uh, which gave me like a total return of 20%. But if I reinvested the dividends, it's 25% with like almost 11% analyzed. So of course, when I look at my 6.1%, I started to be like, oh my God, like this is underperforming S&P 500 by like literally 100%. So am I, uh, you know, just stupid to keep my money uh, here? Should have just bought the S&P 500, uh, perhaps. And first thing you gotta understand that uh, what you're seeing here and to, to solve so, sort of the S&P 500 issue, uh, what I did is I went to uh, Yahoo historical data and I just plotted exactly the date when I started investing and uh, the date today when I'm recording this video. Uh, this gave me total return. And then, you know, if I want to do analyze return, I just got to divide it by two and a half to keep it consistent. 
So it will give me this 11.66%, uh, which is way higher than what I got with Well Simple. Now, the first problem in my calculation and sort of the main problem here is if we look into my account, even though in my mind I remember that I dumped 19,000 right away, I actually didn't. Uh, I put 250 first just to see how it works. Then I was like, okay, you know, the inference is good. Maybe I'll put like 200 as like automatic contribution. And then, oh, I have some money because I sold the website. Like, let's just put more. So when you look at the history, you'll see that 19,000 were not there at the beginning. And if you're just doing this, like if you're just comparing the S&P 500, the analyzed return, this kind of assumes that the whole amount of money was on June 28th, it was there and you didn't touch it. That's the only way to compare it, which obviously uh, it's not the case. So you can see why my returns will be lower. Now, the next problem with that, it's not only that I've put the money in and then, okay, like at some point I just stopped touching it. I started to receive dividends that started to get reinvested. And there is also some fees that are associated with the robo advisor. Simple return metric does not account for any of that. And you can quickly see the flaws in the calculation. For example, if I would have withdrawn like a thousand dollars at the end of the year and put this in my calculation, my annualized return would be like 3.8% even though this has nothing to do with how well the money was invested and how well it performed. So to solve the issue of the timing of the cash inflows and outflows, the finance people came out with this metric called time weighted returns. And the first thing you need to know that when you see the fund reporting their historical returns, uh, like we're seeing here for the well simple, this is gonna be in the time weighted return manner. And there is like a mess that's involved here. Uh, but what you need to understand that the purpose of the time weighted return is to exclude the timing of all of the cash flows and sort of to give you a more objective picture on how well the fund is performing. So if you wanted to compare uh, well simple to quest wells you know you need to look you need to be looking at time weighted returns not the simple return not the return that you actually got because perhaps the timing of your cash flows or withdrawal influences those two other metrics so that's the most important thing you need to know the time weighted return is the return where you compare it without taking into account the timing uh, of of the cash flow so it's the the idea is to give you sort of more objective picture so you know if i go back here and then i you know i'll i'll, I'll go back and then i look at uh, my return here it's 5.8 percent and then i look at uh, you know 11.5 percent on s p 500 it gives me a clear picture that in a time weighted return the S&P 500 outperformed well simple portfolio. So for that period of time, I would have been better off investing is in S&P 500 index. Now the problem with time weighted returns is those cash flows do exist because you know hopefully you're depositing money into your account, and depending on what day you deposit it, could be red day, green day at the stock market. Are you paying fees to your brokerage? You're getting dividends that get reinvested, perhaps you're even withdrawing money. So to account for sort of all of this and account for more of like your performance, there is a matrix called money weighted uh, returns. So if I click on it, you'll see that my returns actually go up to 8.3%. So that should account for the fact that uh, I did not withdraw any money, that all of the dividends got reinvested, that I really did not that touch that uh, account a lot. So you know, time in the market beats uh, timing the market, plus the 8.3%, it's way closer to 11.5, which is return on S&P 500, makes me uh, feel better. The mess behind money weighted formula is even more complicated. It's very akin to internal rate of return, if you're familiar with that. 
And again, the idea is to evaluate how well did you do by like timing the market, by reinvesting in the dividends. You know, if you invest a big amount of money on a red day and then it didn't touch the money, you will be performing like way better than somebody who did the other way around or somebody like me who invests money on the same day of the week, uh, no matter what's going on uh, with the stock market. So the idea is to give your own sort of personal score, taking into account the dividends, the fees and your timing. And you can't take that number 8.5% and go around and say like, well, is there any other portfolio that, that can beat it? Because again, it's very custom score. In summary, simple return, simple to calculate, but doesn't take into account fees, any cash flows, outflows. It only really works if you put some amount of money, say into savings account, did not reinvest anything, there was no fees, like it's just not realistic, it's not accurate. Uh, don't use it to measure the portfolio performance. If you're looking to compare portfolios performances, you need to be looking at the time weighted returns. And if you're looking to evaluate how well your investment strategy works, like perhaps you're, you were trying to time the market, you only bought stocks on the red days and you never took out the dividends and you found an extra cheap brokerage that only charges 0.25% uh, management expense ratio, uh, you gotta look at the money weighted returns. Now to finish off this video, I wanna answer the sort of the elephant in the room, like why did I invest with well simple instead of just buying S&P 500? And I knew knowingly that this return will be lower because of course I looked here and before I invested, I looked at S&P 500, so I knew this is going to be lower. So why did I still invest and here didn't get the 11.66%. You also got to realize uh, that this is without reinvestment of dividends. So when I reinvest the dividends, it's even a higher return. And the answer to that is simple is because there is a trade off between the risk and reward. So, you know, when we look at the S&P 500 in five years, yes, it grew like crazy, even with it being down in 2018. But if we look at 30 years, you'll see there was like a period that I remember very vividly that that com uh, crash that for three years it was going down double digits. It obviously went down like crazy in 2008. So when you invest with a robo advisor and you get the automatic rebalancing, you know, you get the diversification, you hedge in the currency, uh, you're reducing the risk. And by default, when you reduce that risk, uh, the reward is coming down as well. So I would have done better if I invested in S&P 500. I would have done even better if all I did was buy Apple, Google, and Facebook, or pretty much any FANG stock or all of them together, I would have beat S&P 500 even more. But it would have been way riskier. So the sound sort of investment strategy for me is to balance out the risk uh, with uh, the reward. So the 8.5% analyzed return in money weighted metric uh, that I'm earning right now uh, is satisfactory to me. It could be not satisfactory to you. And uh, that's why personal finance is personal. Uh, I wanted to thank you for watching. And you know, if you stayed here for that long, uh, I really want to thank you. And please consider subscribing because that's kind of a videos we're trying to put out. Uh, videos that give no nonsense explanations on how to be like smart with your money while still living your life. Uh, thank you for watching until the next time.